close. Buddha coined the word enlightenment. Enlightenment is awakening to inner light. The lamp of awareness is lit. Of this we are not yet aware. It is waking up from deep slumber or coming to light. This process of inner opening has been happening since the consciousness dawned for the first time millions of years ago. The process of waking from slumber came to be known as enlightenment with the advent of Gautam, the Buddha. The process of ex awakening existed even before Gautam Siddhartha coined this word enlightenment. However, one thing is common that if you do not know or use the word enlightenment, enlightenment has been existing. It has two shores and between these two shores flows the consciousness moment to moment as you interact in the world of objects and beings. One is the near shore and the other is far shore. A flower that has never known about the sun and the flower that has known the sun are not the same. A flower, indeed, they cannot be the same because the flower that has witnessed the rising sun can never feel a flower that has never witnessed the rising sun can never feel the rising sun within. Such a flower is dead. It has potentiality, but the potentiality has not attained to fruition. It has never known its spirit. Such is the situation of each one of us. However, a flower that has witnessed the sunrise has also seen something arise within itself. It has discovered its own soul. Now this flower is no more a flower. The flower has known a deep happening within. This is the destiny of each one of you. The flower of your being has to attain fruition, the ultimate in the fruition of your being is enlightenment and this word was coined by Gautam the Buddha for the first time. To create this inner sun of awareness within, Buddha invented the technique of meditation almost 25 centuries ago. This technique not only created the inner sun of awakening, but at the same time, it also allows the awareness to penetrate into every cell of the body and then to the entire being. The technique that Buddha invented is known as Anapanasati Yoga or Vipassana. This is the yoga of incoming and outgoing breath awareness. It is also known as Vipassana meditation. The word Vipassana has comes from two words, we and Pashana. We means neutral and Pashana means to see. Thus Vipassana means to see. It means to look at everything with a neutral attitude. We see things happening around us. We have statements. We see circumstances and situations. We do not see these as neutral. We say that we have done Vipassana. We do Vipassana on a regular basis. But this, the flowering, the light of Vipassana 
is not reflecting through the lives. Vipassana is also known as insight meditation. It was discovered Buddha to unravel the questions arising in his mind to know the truth. There are many people around who say that they have been doing Vipassana and they do it on a regular basis. But when you look into their lives, there is no effect reflecting through the lives when they are interacting on a day-to-day -day basis with objects and beings. There are circumstances and situations, but each in each circumstance and situations, they are preached to us, guided by their mind. In dealing with the people, they are also guided by their I, the egocentric identities and conditionings. The word enlightenment and nirvana was introduced by Buddha. Before him, the experience existed However, it was more implicit. Buddha gave the first glimpse of inner flowering. Thus, he opened the ways for inner flowering of consciousness. Before Buddha was born, his mother Maya Devi had a dream of white elephant with six tuskers. In the dream, the elephant dissolved into her. And about 10 months after her dream of a white elephant and the sign that she would give birth to a great being, Queen Maya was expecting her child. One day she went to the king and said, My dear, I have to go back to my parents. My baby is about, is almost due. Since it was customary in India for a wife to have the first baby by her father's house, the king agreed, saying very well, I will make the necessary arrangements for you to go. So on the way to her parents' family, to her father's family house, while passing through, the Lumbani forest, under the sal tree, Maya, Maya Devi gave birth to Gautam, the Buddha. According to legends about his birth, the baby began to walk and took seven steps forward. At each step, a lotus flower appeared on the ground then, at the seventh stride, he stopped with a noble voice, shouted, I am thief of the world. Eldest am I in the world. Foremost am I in the world. This is the last birth. There is now no more coming to be. And the events went on like this. The birth with the birth of Buddha. But the cons the word was introduced by Gautam the Buddha. The two shores that are there, the far and near. Near shore comes when the drop merges into the ocean. The individuality merges into the ocean. This is known as the drop merging or dissolving in the ocean. The other shore is created when ocean merges its qualities into the drop the art lends its quality to the drop. There are certain paths where the world does not exist. There is no concept of enlightenment as in Christianity, Islam, 
Sufism, Hinduism and Sikhism. But the very happening remains there. It was 25 centuries ago during the time of Gautam Buddha and Mahabir, this world was coined. But in 20th century, this world enlightenment gained momentum and blossomed with the advent of Osho. There and other masters like Krishnamurti, Raman, Gurchiev, although among these, it was only Osho who, he, who spoke about enlightenment and gave it, revived this world. With him, the world gained momentum and now vast majority knows about enlightenment, aspires for enlightenment and works to attain to this state of enlightenment. Many years ago, I wrote one book, Enlightenment, the Ultimate Flowering, wherein I spoke about the enlightenment of different masters, Gautam Buddha, Osho, Raman, Krishnamurti, Ramakrishna, and many other masters. In the process of awakening, there are different stages. The highest stage is the one that was attained by Gautam Buddha, Raman, Osho, Ram Krishna, Krishnamurti. They were unique in many senses, and the state of enlightenment that they attained is of the highest degree, highest level. If I put it here as Gautam Buddha when he was born, as he took each step a flower has blossomed. And when he took the seventh stride, this was said that the, the seventh flower came in. So there are seven stages of enlightenment. Raman, Krishnamurti, Ramakrishna, Osho, Gurjiev, they all attained the seventh level of enlightenment. Means after that, there is no need to take birth. This is the last birth. There is no need to take birth afterwards. There are others who attain to enlightenment. Thereafter, they still have to take, assume another birth for the continuation of the process because some work has remained incomplete and existence is still wants them to come back into life. But for that, they do not born as normal out of the birth cycle. Instead, they choose when they will take a next birth again. Enough for now.